Well, um, first, inshallah, I have a, a, I would like to, uh, I have established some, some, some form of uh, employment, of course. So, I'm waiting to do that. I actually have a, have a um, job um, that I received a while ago. It was through a program we had, a job coordinating program. Um, so I'm just waiting to be able to go there. So I should start that, not not this coming week, but the following week, which should be the week of the third, um, week of June third. And it's a, a logistics job. It's just initially it's outside where I'm going. It's just a logistics job where they do a lot of um, corporate moves for office buildings, such as you know Bank of America and stuff like that. I'll be in the warehouse just doing like, um, loading them on the truck. So that's just something that's, you know just to get my um, get my schedule right and, and, and just to get the, the work experience going. But my intention is, of course, to work in the automotive field. I'm a, I'm a, uh, by trade, I've become a, um, a master, an advanced level master mechanic. So I would probably like to be in that field for a minute. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm working towards that. I got some people that I know um, working at a few dealerships here and around Columbus. Uh, Ohio, so I'm going to try to uh, get in someone's dealership as a as a mechanic. So I'm waiting on that. And also, I'm trying to get in school. So um, I have to go there. Next week, I should be putting down to go to a, uh, to go down to the school to try to see if I can get registered for school because I want to study um, finish my studies, but with um, mechanical engineering. What they the certifying body is uh, this international certifying body called. Um, Automotive, uh, automotive, um, as excellent, um, automotive service excellent, ASE, and mm-hmm. they certify mechanics through a series of tests. I've taken, um, I have 12 certifications, uh, and one of them, the last one I just took, um, two weeks ago, uh, which was, I believe it was, the 13th, which was my advanced, my advanced specialist um, certification, which is like a diagnostic um, certification, doing a lot of the computer systems and the um, emissions regulations. So I passed that, having left, so I got my advanced um, diagnostic um, certification also. So, yes, my intention is to get married, <laughs> inshallah, you know. Uh, I, I would say I understand that, you know, if, if it requires a little patience, but, you know, um, there is some, um, ain't, I'm kind of anxious, but it's, I understand that it does require a little patience. Everything has to come at its time. Um, but, yeah, um, that, that is an intention of mine. Um, I, 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 like I said, I, I, I don't, of course, I still don't know how to go about it right this moment. And inshallah, of course, I'm going to need some help with a lot of things. So I do intend to, you know, be involved with the message and uh, especially involved with, with Taba and get out and help in, in, in that aspect. And I'm trying, me and me trying to find me, uh, trying to find me some type of um, space in the community um, with the brothers. Right, yeah, that's my intention because as a youth, when I came in, there's still a lot of guys involved or a lot of guys that's um, um, potentially subject or more at risk at um, committing crimes or more at risk at being incarcerated as a youth. And my intention is to somehow try to um, divert and minimize their um, their um, coming into contact with prison or corrections. Period. You know, trying to memorize the time the the, the 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 impact of the the prison the the, the school to prison pipeline as they call it in in, um, in mass incarceration. Um, I had the circles yeah, dealing with mass incarceration. Yes, my intention is to find um, some way to interact with the youth. Maybe be able to provide some type of um, mentoring or some advice or just some some type of help and guidance, inshallah. 
And here's the thing. There are many Muslims that are incarcerated, right? Do not have access to books. Do not have access to um, genuine and, and, and authentic sources of knowledge. So the importance is this. We have, as an ummah, the obligation of helping those who are in need. So, and some of the most needy people are those who will be considered to be at the bottom of society. Rock bottom. They have done what they've done or been involved in and what they have been involved in. But at the same time, a lot of them, and I would say close to 90% of the Muslims, you know, just from my experiences, are coming back into the world. They're going to be your, they will probably be your neighbors. They'll probably be your brothers that are next to you in the masjid. And if they're unprepared, whether it be unprepared um, mentally or unprepared spiritually, it's going to affect us not only as a wider society, but also it will affect us as a Muslim community because, as we know, if one part of the body is hurt, the whole part of the body is hurt. If we don't help those who need the help, we run the risk of those people um, diminishing and bringing down the total um, the total identity or the outlook on, on, on that the Islamic community has. Because once we have guys that go out and do crimes or go out and, and, and just not productive in society, well, the burden and responsibility falls on the ones who have the ability to do something about it. You know, so they just must embrace these guys. Because I've, I've had contact and I know guys that went home, Muslims that went home, and the community, they don't embrace them, you know. Brothers go home with big big hopes of being embraced by the community and, you know, finding some help or finding some 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 camaraderie with their brothers. And it's always a, 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 a sneer or a jeer at the brother or, you know, they don't, they want to stay far away from him because he might be a little off or he has tattoos on his face or something like that. Um, so the support has to be there because these, these brothers are coming and we must accept them and just overall just try to help them um, change their own reality. The responsibility we have towards our brother. And Prophet Muhammad said, so, uh, so, 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 you know, help your brother, even if he is impressive. You know, we must help each other and force all to succeed. Oh, it's the, it's the, you know, so a lot of it is from, you know, um, just the pleasures of, of e you know. If there's some succor in, in knowing, you know, or turning to Allah and dua or just having that, that, that tranquility from um, studying and reading the Quran, it takes you out of it. You know, I probably, I probably traveled to many countries just in the books that, that I've read, you know. <laughs> so, you know, I, I get, I get, I get in my, um, um, I would call it airplane mode and, and when, when I'm studying and, and basically tune everything out and it's beneficial, you know, it's, there's, 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 there's the in it, I would say. You know, if you're sincere about it, you know, you, you, you seriously striving for it, you know, there's the in it. Probably, that's probably where it comes from, you know. Me and me and the brothers that I, that, that I uh, deal with on a daily daily basis, we, we we was always in a joyful state. You know, it was it was very rare to see us in a uh, it was very rare to see us in a down state or, or just in a, a miserable state because you know you had to keep some type of enjoyment about uh, about yourself every day. So our circle, we always is trying to have some type of enjoyment. Um, you know, um, just to get up 
all miss each other because the otherwise you would be miserable. Didn't have something. It would, it would, it would take a very, it would take a, a major toll on you. 